There's some breaking news to bring you now from the US. Coast guards there have resumed their search efforts for four British sailors missing in the Atlantic Ocean. It comes after more than 160,000 people signed the petition calling for the search to start again. It was originally called off after just two days. Their yacht, Cheeky Rafiki, was last seen on Friday sailing back to Southampton from a regatta in the Caribbean. They got into difficulty a thousand miles off the coast of Cape Cod in Massachusetts. With me now is yachtsman Jonathan Blaine. He was dramatically rescued in 1990 when his boat ran into trouble during his first transatlantic crossing 300 miles off the coast of Ireland. Thanks so much for being with us. It's a pleasure. You've just heard this news, they've resumed the search. Was I, that the right decision? I think it's absolutely the right decision. I'm totally delighted that they've done that. I think, um, you know, they're highly professional, the Coast Guard. They've got reasons for, for calling it off, but I think that it's right, you know, to give it another go. and. Uh, the, there's such a well of support, um, you know, to actually go and do it. And I think, I've, I believe that they could very easily be alive and I don't think we should give up on them. And I've got very good personal sort of experience to know what it's like on the other end. I'm going to ask you about that in a minute. But the reason that the Coast Guard originally gave is that they said this crew could only have survived for about 20 hours after the time of distress. And they gave some pretty good reason. The waves there were 15 foot high. The winds were 50 miles per hour. The water temperature, very cold as well. And they just said these men wouldn't have survived. I mean. It's possible to survive, is it? Uh, well, I, I, th I think absolutely. I mean, I've been in a hurricane in mid-Atlantic, you know, as well as being a yachtsman, uh, I'm also been a professional seaman, a Royal Naval officer. So uh, I've been through a hurricane at sea. I've been in, um, you know, uh, in a yacht with significantly bigger waves than 15 foot's not that high. 50 knots of wind's pretty high, but 15 foot waves are not that high. And you better the... explain to us what you've got here, Jonathan. Well, th this, this here, this, is a satellite distress beacon right. and uh, this little baby saved my life 24 years ago and I'm very pleased that it did because you know I've loved my life and uh, you know I've got family three lovely girls and a lovely wife and I love every minute of every day and I'm sure these guys on the um, you know on the yacht I don't believe it's their time I think they've got lots of life two very young guys two middle-aged guys everyone's got lots of life left in them and what I know is that they when you embark on ventures like that, you're not stupid. You know the elements. You have huge respect for the sea. And I think the, the thing that gives me hope is that just in my situation, they knew that they had a problem. And when you know that you have a problem, you prepare for it. And, um, you know, unfortunately, they didn't have, like, one of these uh, you know, satellite distress beacon like that, because this one goes for days and days and days. And, you know, it sa saved our life. Unfortunately, the RAF found us and, um, you know, we had a happy end. Jonathan, have you seen this picture that was released today of a crew on a cargo ship? You can see it here, who say they think this photo they took is of the overturned yacht. What can we tell from them? It does look like it could be, and that would suggest perhaps that we know kind of the area where it could have happened. Um, well, I, to me, that's very, very encouraging that they've actually found the yacht. Um, the thought that this could be anything other than their yacht, I think, is, is just pie in the sky. This is, is their yacht. You can see what's happened. The keel's come off the yacht, which is why it would have capsized. But, you know, the, the, they would have been expecting that when... When we had problems... Yeah, let's have a look at some of the pictures of, um, of, that you took. I mean, it's amazing that you managed to film at a time, a time like this. But, I mean, there they are. You know, they're on their yellow or orange raft, I suppose it could be. We're not sure. Surely yeah. they're very visible to the Coast Guard. If they start flying, they would have seen the raft. Well, I, I don't think so, because um, when, when you're out at sea, you see you've got these massive waves. You have so how big, are, how big are these waves here? These waves, well, it's always difficult to, you know, to tell. I'd say they were sort of 20 foot something like that, 20, 25 uh, foot. Um, this uh, here, we got water inside the yacht, and it was just the same as they had. They were leaking. They didn't know where the water was coming from. Our yacht was eventually salvaged by HMS Art Raw. We got it back. We found out it was leaking through the keel. Our keel didn't fall off, but it could have done. We were expecting it to. That was our sus suspicion. How did you keep your hopes up? How did you hold on to this idea that you were going to be rescued? Well, um, we, we had no intention of dying. That, that's for, for sure. Um, we were trained. We knew what we were doing. And we knew that uh, if the yacht sank, 
we had a life raft just as they got their life raft and because we were in that situation when the you know the yacht was filling up with water we knew that if the keel fell off it would be instant just like that it would go over so we had the life raft in the cockpit tied on to the boat so if the boat had gone over it had gone over very very quickly uh, the life raft would have gone off, it would have fallen into the water, but it was tied on and they had like a rope, the pull, pull release, and then it just sort of blows up. We had a grab bag so that uh, we had like food and, you know, things ready that we wanted to take with us. And they would have been just as prepared as we were. But psychologically, if these sailors are still alive, do you think they're obviously holding on to this hope they're out there looking for us? Well, you know, th this is a photocopy of one of my favourite books and it's called... 117 days adrift and lo and behold this family husband and wife spent 117 days alive in a life raft I know that you can do it I've you know I've been Royal Navy trained and you know I know that it's possible you know you're not right up in the north part of the uh, the Atlantic with sub-zero temperatures and icebergs we're not in Titanic territory we're further south than that they can capture rainwater from the, uh, from the raft, they'll have fishing hooks where they can fish, and there will be a certain amount of provisions already on the raft. We can only imagine as well what it's been like for their family, who obviously have to believe that they're still alive now, being told that the research is going to resume. I mean, what a relief for them. I mean, well. I, I think, obviously, that's one step, but, I mean, they're not going to be fully happy until their families have been found. But I remember 24 years ago, my parents had the TV crews in their front lounge as well. You know, we've, be, we've been there, and I think it's really important that we don't give up hope. And um, there's actually a lot of shipping around in the Atlantic as well, so it's not just aircraft looking. There's a lot of ships that can be looking. The one point that you referred to, and I think it's a very important thing, well, surely if an aircraft is there, you're going to see them. And what I'd like to stress very clearly is that with the waves, you have peaks and troughs, and you can get whole ships disappear into the troughs and uh, even when you're looking from the sea uh, or from the air it's very very difficult to find now we got close enough to land before we were finally rescued that we were be we were airlifted off and it was the furthest they've ever sent a helicopter out to sea that helicopter knew where we were we fired flares we had smoke canisters they struggled to see us so to me, it's not a surprise that you fly an aircraft over the, the area. And when I was in the Royal Navy, I was affiliated to 201 Squadron with the Nimrods. And, you know, I looked down there from, from, from the air. It's not easy to see. It. The ocean is a very big place. You can, you're just like a pinprick, even if it's a bright orange dome. Um, so I, I think people shouldn't draw conclusions that there's nobody there just because... Uh, that life raft might be in the trough as you're, um, you're looking at it. Jonathan, absolutely fascinating to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us and really explaining what the search and rescue teams are going through, what the families well, and the crew are going through as well. well. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. Bosnian officials say more than a quarter of the population has been left without clean water after severe flooding across many...